Do you know the story of rotten oranges? When one of the oranges in the sack starts to rot, the others around it get infected. The same deviations occurs when one evil person influences those around her. The one who just threw a rotten orange at me is screaming, "You are a pest!" Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Don't you think that the person who bites other people's hands off is a rotten orange? That's what I'd like to talk about today. My name is Alicia. I got married a year ago. I'm a 30-year-old who is devoted to work and marriage. My relationship with my husband Ryan is perfect. If my career continues to grow, I would like to have a child in the future. I'm still 30, but already 30. Everyone has their own opinions, and I have mine. I like to go with the flow. What are you talking about? Have a baby right away. Women are meant to bear children. My mother-in-law, Carrie. Say such insensitive things, Mom. Please don't interfere in our marriage. We talk about these things together. Ryan is quick to defend me. Oh no, you're completely wrapped around her little finger. That's what I was against you, married and older woman. She tricks and manipulates you. She sat with a distorted face, as if she was biting down on the bitterness. Since you came, my family has been a mess. We were at peace, but because of you, my son has gone crazy. You have ruined my life too. Once her blood rushes to her head, she heats up and loses control. I wish there was a switch to shut her down like a robot. Unfortunately, humans don't have such a thing. If only my father-in-law were here to calm her down. Unfortunately, he's out golfing with his co-workers today. Ryan and I can't handle her well. So, in times like this, enough, hon. Let's go home. Ryan prompts me to leave. Her temper tantrums amaze me every time. I'm sorry, Hon, about my mother. Don't worry, it's nothing new. We've been married for a year, and I'm used to it. She and I have been at odds with each other since the beginning of our marriage, or rather, she's been more hostile to me from the beginning. The first time I met her was when Ryan brought me to his parents' house. She was sitting next to my father-in-law Ben, with a sulky face. This is Alicia. We met at work. Ryan introduced me, and I learned for her to give a kiss on their cheeks. In contrast to Ben, who was cheerful, Carrie had an irritated look on her face and said, "Does she work to scavenge men?" It was the first time someone I just met. Blatantly showed malicious intentions toward me. I was in total shock, and had no idea what I was being taught. Mom, how rude! Ryan tried to argue on my behalf, but she was having none of it. It's just not right for a mature woman to marry a man four years younger. It was true that I was older. But was it that strange to have an older wife in our society these days? And to tell me that straight in my face was quite rude. That was the first time I realized that my mother-in-law was insane. I was the one who approached her. It was TMI on Ryan's part, but I felt happy and embarrassed. There was an air of awkwardness among us. I glanced at him and saw that he was blushing. Well, Alicia, thank you for taking care of my son.
I hear that you are at a manager level and are giving him guidance at work. I'll be counting on you to keep taking good care of him. Ben tried to make me feel at ease, which made the situation neutral. But Carrie's sulking continued. I grew uneasy about Mary Ryan. Even thought Ben was nice. I could understand why he didn't scold his wife for being bothered and nasty at his son's fiance in the first place. It soon became clear, though. My mom may not look like that, but she's actually sickly. I was about to retort, "No way," but I swallowed and listened. She suffered from migraines and anemia, and often needed to stay in bed. Ben had been trying not to rock the boat out of concern for her health instead of rebooking her. I see. It must be hard for him too. Yeah, but don't worry. I'm going to tell her off loud and clear. His reassurance made me decide to marry him. Carrie continued to bully me after we got married. Most of the time, it was done over the phone, so that I could be half listening. And sometimes I'd put down my phone and let her rant. There was no harm to me. We didn't live together, so it was nothing to worry about. I thought so, but my head hurts. I have vertigo. Please come over quickly. She called Ryan once a week, usually on Saturday. Ben was often out on weekends for business trips or meetings. She was home alone most of the time. Whenever Ryan received such a call, he would go and check on her. Don't worry, I'll go alone. That will make her hate me even more. I'll go with you. At that time, I was still bound by a sense of obligation to get along with her. She was sick, and I should have shown her a little bit of care. I was thinking positively. Ryan was actually not in the mood to go, so he looked somewhat relieved to know that I was coming alone. I was also hoping that she would take the opportunity to open up to me a little. However, what are you doing here? Get the hell out! When we arrived at her house, she slammed the door, shouted at me, and I was almost turned away. I thought to myself that she seemed perfectly well. But I kept my mouth shut. Ryan quickly intervened. "Mom, you're going to get even worse if you get so excited. Calm down." Instead of listening to him, she became even more agitated. "Be quiet! Why did you take her as your wife? I disapprove of it. Why did she hate me so much? What is it that you don't like about me?" I asked her fearfully. I don't like your voice, your face, the fact that you are older than him, your ideals, your class, everything. I don't like you one bit. She denied my existence at once. Enough! How dare you say these things to her? We had plans today, but we came here instead. You think I care? I didn't ask you to bring her along. She turned away and went into her bedroom. Home? Let's just go home. But if she can move and talk that much, she must be fine. There's no need for us to be here. Ryan urged me to leave. When we were walking to the train station, hi, it's been a long time. An elderly woman approached us. Oh, it's been a while, Alicia. This is my parents' neighbor. When he introduced me as his wife, she suddenly changed her expression. So you're the wife? Yes, I am. She took a breath and then grimaced at me. You have to be nice to your mother-in-law. I don't care how much you don't like her. You can't talk badly about her health and ignore her. 
It's really heartless, don't you think? Ryan and I were both stunned, not understanding what she was talking about. If we took her words as they were, it was a false accusation. What do you mean? Who told you that? Harry always tells me in tears that you are spiteful. I understand that you guys aren't close, but it's terrible to overdo it. It's definitely not her fault that you can't get pregnant, is it? It's your own problem. If you continue like this, you will be punished. I felt my blood boil all at once. I can't believe this. I could not say another word. Carrie had been telling the neighbors lies about me, and was having fun with it. Ryan was furious too. Everything my mother told you is bullshit. Please don't believe it. He took my hand and we walked away. What did I ever do to her? Why did she make up those lies? I'm sorry. I'm ashamed to be her son. He seemed to be quite shocked at her deed, and didn't say anything more than that. After that, Carrie and I ceased to interact. Ryan became the middleman for all correspondence, and went to his parents' house alone. I have to at least show my face. If she's really ill, it wouldn't be so funny. He smiled sadly at me, and I had no choice but to see him off silently. Then came the holiday season. My parents had already passed away, and my sister was living alone at home. We decided to visit her after Christmas. The problem was my in-law's house. Two months had passed since my last visit. I still didn't want to see Carrie, but I didn't want to be estranged from Ben, who had always been nice to me. I was agonizing about what to do. Then Ryan suggested, "My dad will be home on Christmas Day, so why don't we just show up for a bit?" If he was home, Carrie might be calmer. Ryan said, "If she threw another tantrum, leave her to Ben, and we could get out quickly." So I agreed with him. On Christmas Day, the unimaginable happened. Hey, Alicia. Merry Christmas, Ben. Are you alright? He looked somewhat paler than usual. Yes, I'm fine. You must be cold. Come on in. His voice lacked energy too. Ryan and I were puzzled as we entered the house. Carrie was lying down on the sofa in the living room, devouring navel oranges. Without even glancing at me, she irritatingly said, "You're here again. I don't feel good at all." I sat down in the living room with a bitter smile on my face. Ben brought me a cup of tea. Thank you, Alicia, for always checking on Carrie. Oh no, it's only until a while ago. I haven't been able to come here lately. It's been hectic. I couldn't tell him the real reason, so I stammered a little. Oh please, I'm still grateful. I'm sorry for the trouble she's caused you. Ben pat me on my shoulder. Carrie stared at him with evil eyes. You guys are so noisy. I can't even hear the TV. She got up from the sofa and shouted at us, "Hey, why don't you show some gratitude too? They came all the way here for us, didn't they?" I asked my son to come. I don't want to see this woman. She began to roughly peel an orange on the coffee table. Sorry, Alicia. I'm very sorry. Please don't apologize. It's all right. 
Ryan and I were a little taken aback by Ben's humble behavior. We remained there for a little while until Carrie suddenly lashed out. These oranges rotten. It's all your fault, Alicia. What in the world did it have to do with me? Ryan and Ben were perplexed by her odd behavior. Without the care, she continued. You are like a rotten orange. You are a bad influence on everyone around you. Even the neighbors are saying that you are a pest. My patience, which I had been enduring until then, finally snapped. That's because you've been spreading lies about me. Shut up! Who cares if it's true or not? I can't stand that you are in my life. It was like a toddler throwing a tantrum, and there was no logic in what she was saying. Don't be ridiculous! Why do you have to hate me so much? Shut up, you pest! With the scream, an orange sphere flew toward me with the whoosh. I felt a crushing sensation on my face, and it fell to the floor with the dumb thought. A navelled orange, peeled. You are a rotten orange. That's why you are. You have to be thrown away. She looked at Ben and Ryan and continued her rant. She talks back too much. Just throw her out and be done with it. I feel sick. What are you waiting for, Ben? Get rid of her. I couldn't take it anymore. I was such a fool for trying to be good to her. I wiped the juice off the orange splattered on my face with tissues. I thought I couldn't be a member of this family. Ryan and I might have been finished. Such a sense of despair came over me. At that moment, Ben spoke up. "I see. Then I should leave you too." His voice rumbled. "Agreed." I'm determined to get my mother out of my life now too, Dad. Ryan followed quietly. See, I told you. Carrie misunderstood for a moment that they were going to get rid of me. She seemed to recite the lies in her head and finally understood. She expected that they are going to be on her side, but it turned out to be the exact opposite. Why did you guys say? I say I'm going to get rid of you. You just said throwing away the rotten oranges, didn't you? Ben, honey, am I a rotten orange? No, I'm a human being. She spun on the table, venting her frustration, but there was no one on her side anymore. I'm going to be blunt. You are the rotten orange in this room. In other words, you are a rotten human being. Had there been a time when Ryan insulted his mother, sensing something was wrong, she panicked. What's wrong, Ryan? She's got you all worked up again. I wonder how much of a pest she is. She was asking for his agreement in a pleading voice. No, Mom. I am her husband. As a husband, I have a duty to protect her. You are no longer my mother for continue to abuse her. I'm cutting you off at all costs. How dare you say that? She glared at Ryan and tried to jump on him, but Ben grabbed her. Stop! You're making a fool of yourself. His normally calm face turned grim. She wasn't so sensible that she wouldn't have flinched at such a trivial thing. Well then, why don't you protect me? I'm your wife. My son and daughter-in-law turned me like this. I wanted to reiterate that I'd never done anything wrong to her. Rather, I was the victim. But in her mind, our position was switched. I think I protect you enough. I watch over you so that you don't harm Alicia. K, 
can you even see that? Behind his calm demeanor, there was a wave of inexpressible anger. He had been patient with her for years, decades even. He must have been overthrowing with the feelings that had built up over the years. What the hell? Are you making me the villain? It's her being a rotten orange that's so blame. Since she came, I, I, she suddenly collapsed. I was stunned, but Ben and Ryan didn't pay any attention to her. What are you going to do now, Dad? Divorce. I'm going to leave this house. She beat on the street without it. What? Divorce? What do you mean you're leaving? The one who supposedly fainted got up with force and glared at us. It seemed I was the only one who was deceived by her acting. Oh wow, you're quite all right. You can live on your own then. She grimaced at me as I commented sarcastically, but our positions were now reversed. I glared back at her more than twice as hard. She instantly looked frightened and became quiet. After that, Ben filed for divorce. Later, I found out that he had been fed up with her for a long time. Although he didn't think about divorce before, he kept a distance and did not argue with her. He even minimized the time he spent at home and devoted himself to his work. Because of this, she became a tyrant who said and did whatever she wanted. Her tyranny had been directly only at him until I became her target. He felt a strong sense of crisis then. I found out on Christmas Eve that she had been spreading lies about you to the neighbors. I was disgusted to find out that she was such a horrible woman. That was why he looked pale and gloomy that day. The mystery was solved. When the divorce was on his mind, the rotten orange incident happened. That was the last straw for him to make up his mind. She's put you through a lot of pain. Apologizing won't make it go away. No worries. It's you, who've had it tough over the decades. When I consult him, his eyes became watery. I was skeptical that he was really capable of leaving his sickly wife. She even lied about being sickly. It was all an act. When I heard it, I was really dumbfounded. She tried to gain his sympathy and pretending that she was seriously ill and refused to divorce him on that basis. However, a medical checkup revealed that there was no problem. There must be something wrong with me. Just find it. As she lost her position, she ranted and raved at the hospital. After the divorce, Ben turned the house over to her as part of the property division and moved out. He informed the neighbors about the divorce and cleared all the lies she made up. He put everything in order, including restoring my honor. The neighbor who accused me called and apologized to me. The rotten orange incident is supposedly still talked about today. Her neighbors know about her past misdeed, so it's become difficult for her to live there. My husband tells me about Carrie's current life, and I almost burst into laughter. Well, she deserves it, doesn't she? I hope Ben will have a peaceful life after all the trouble he's been through. I do too. I'm happier now, so I'm sure he'd find his happiness too. Shall we go give him a happy news then? I'm gonna be a father too. He took my hand gently. I put my hand on my stomach, which was showing a tiny bump. It felt warm against my hand.